the Republican Party hates libertarians, both little L libertarians in their party and big L libertarians in the Libertarian Party. And as they show their disgust and distaste and try and punish their legislators, what they're doing is just driving them into our arms. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason, and today I'm talking with Nicholas Sarwark. He is the chairman of the Libertarian National Committee, or the LP, as we like to call it around here. Nicholas, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me, Nick. The Trump presidency so far, does it bear out your worst uh, fears of what he was going to rot? The Trump presidency so far has been tremendous. It is pretty much the best recruiting tool for the Libertarian Party we've ever had. It's much better than anything I could develop inside the party. He's shown that the success of Republicanism is the death of liberty, which is a good way to show people that there's an option from the two-party system. Hmm. What are the things that he's done so far that particularly uh, you think drive me that message home? Uh, the nomination of Jeff Sessions as Attorney General, um, you know, a man who walked himself into lying to a senator during a hearing which shows his incompetence as an attorney and wants to bring us back to the failed policies of prosecuting the racist war on drugs using civil asset forfeiture to steal money and things from citizens who haven't been convicted of a crime or haven't even, even necessarily haven't even been uh, indicted or charged with anything exactly um, basically highway robbery and through bringing back a old failed program of adoption he's able to work around state laws to try and prevent civil asset forfeiture abuse, um, those sort of things are really putting a lie to the idea that the Republican Party or the Trump presidency is going to be any friend to somebody who favors individual liberty or small government. What is the uh, LP strategy for the midterm elections and 2020? So we're laser focused on the 2018 midterm elections. That's going to set the stage for 2020. Uh, our goal right now is to have over 2,000 candidates running across the country as libertarians to really show our presence as a national political party, to bring in a full-time person at the national office for candidate support and recruitment, um, to really go out there and take advantage of what's going to be a very unsettled midterm election. There are going to be a lot of people who voted for Trump, who had previously voted for Obama, looking for an alternative. Some of them will go back to the Democrats. But I think a lot of them will realize that that back and forth between right and left is not a productive strategy. Do you see any um, high profile uh, Republicans or Democrats who might defect to become libertarians either in the midterms or in 2020? Yes, we're already seeing that at the state legislative level with um, legislators in New Hampshire, Nebraska, Utah, Nevada, flipping over to being libertarians. Oftentimes it's not even them changing. What they're doing is more coming out of the closet and, and removing some of the baggage that they've been carrying in their old party and being who they are, you know, actually showing their identity. I think that's going to happen more and more. The, the Republican Party hates libertarians, both little L libertarians in their party and big L libertarians in the Libertarian Party. And as they show their disgust and distaste and try and punish their legislators, what they're doing is just driving them into our arms. What are the uh, national issues or the, or the big issues uh, that you think will help uh, the LP really kind of punch through the next level in 2020? You know, I think um, attacking the racist war on drugs and trying to end that, that's where a lot of the civil liberties violations and incarceration come from. And outside of a few isolated people in the Senate or the House, neither of the two all parties are addressing that issue. You know, to date, no state Republican or Democratic parties have pushed for cannabis legalization. It's always been through voter initiative or through popular pressure. Um, reforming the immigration system to have open immigration for peaceful people where people can come in and we know who's going to be here so we can address those safety concerns people have but do it in a way where we're not deporting people who have been here for 20 years and sell us tamales around Christmas time. The other thing is um, free trade. We really need to have a party that supports free trade, realizes that while it creates some disruption, it makes all of our lives better. It lets us all live at a higher standard of living in this country, and we need to have sort of unilateral disarmament in the trade wars. We need to open up our trade policy for free trade with all countries. It will reduce the amount of strife we have overseas, reduce the amount of conflict, and really improve the quality of life for all Americans. How do you sell that to people who are like, eh, I don't think so? What you have to talk to is what it is that they're looking for. A lot of the Trump voters were looking for safety and security 
and the idea that we'd get past this stagnation we've had where you have a generation of millennials who are looking at potentially having a lower standard of living than their parents did. The way you solve that is by not trying to fight against disruption in the market, not trying to fight against people coming here to build a better life, but welcoming them in and helping everyone succeed. The market itself will make better quality of life across the board for everyone. Yes, there will be job losses in certain industries, but in a robust market where the economy is growing, we're better able to have policies to, to deal with that than we are trying to throw up a wall and say, nobody else come here. Final thoughts on the Gary Johnson uh, candidacy. He tripled, uh, or more, I guess more than tripled, uh, previous uh, high points totals for, for an LP presidential uh, candidate, and yet there was a widespread sense that he didn't quite hit the mark that he might have. What are your thoughts on that? You know, it's, it's really, you can look at it both ways. If you look at it from the expectations of what people thought he might have been able to do, he didn't hit some people's marks. If you look at it from historical expectations from what we've previously done, he blew everything out of the water. What we're focused on now is building off of that momentum, whether it was luck or serendipity or his hard work that led to the high vote totals, the increased voter registration, the defections, the revenue numbers, all of these things, I can't say. What I can say is we're going to try and build off of it so that 2018 and then 2020 are even more successful. Well, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for talking. Thanks for having me. We've been talking with Nicholas Sarbark. He's the chairman of the Libertarian Party. For Reason, I'm Nick Gillespie.